This is the insanely small Insta360 Go 2 action camera. They say it is the smallest action camera available. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about my pros and cons of this little camera, how I've been using it in my active living life with biking and running and with my kids, and whether or not I think it's worth the $260, $300 price tag. Hey, if you're new here, I'm Arlie with Bike Shop Girl. On this channel, I'm empowering daily life by bike, sustainable living, and I'm slowly talking about life as a full-time content creator. I'm gonna start adding tips and tricks on how you can create content to move others. Today's video is exactly that. So if biking, sustainable living, or creating content to move the people around you interest you, make sure to hit subscribe. So action cameras have come a long way in the last five years. With the push of a button, you can capture daily life nice and easy. Watch this weave it. That's what we should do. We just need to make sure he crosses the path safely, right? Yep. His wheel wants the bike to run over him. Capture those moments, maybe share them on social, share them with your mom, or like me, create videos to empower and inspire others. I have made complete videos that do really well for my work solely with a GoPro. And that's pretty crazy cool. As I mentioned in the beginning of this video, we are gonna be checking out the smallest action camera available on the market, the Insta360 Go 2. A few notes before we get started. One, I was provided this video for free to review. Two, if you're looking for the basic facts or specs and really in-depth feature coverage, I'll put a link to some of my friends that have done really crazy in-depth videos. And three, if you are looking for something specific, look below for timestamps so you can fast forward and get through this video and get back to daily life. Here are some of the basic things I think you should know about the Insta360 Go 2. The most important thing is the size. You're probably looking at this because it is insanely small. Maybe you're looking to have unique point of view shots where you wouldn't be able to get a normal camera, even a GoPro, or maybe you're really interested in having something this small in your bag ready to go. The next thing that I thought was really cool pulling this out. When I pulled it out of the case, I was really excited that it has a magnetic backing built into it. So you can quickly move it between accessories. There's no more of unscrewing and, and screwing things back in like you do with a GoPro. And you can stick it to unique places like my tool bench or my refrigerator. And it just allows this little camera to go in more unique places. And speaking of the accessories, there are a ton of cool options, like the base that doubles as a tripod or remote, a pendant that hangs off of your neck, and due to the size, this doesn't really pull on fabric or weigh down your head like a GoPro or other cameras. I wanna show you the three most common ways that I've been using the Insta360 Go to with their mount options. So the first thing is I'm in my running gear. I have my running shorts on and the go-to in its case fits nice and snug in one of my little, little small running pouches. So not like a big cycling jersey pocket, but super small little running pouch. Let me see if I can show you. These are designed for like food and look, just little guy. This is Probably one of my top ways of using this, and that's just pulling it out, having it ready, uh, or pulling the legs out and putting it in tripod mode. And then my second most common way of using it is pulling it out of its case and then snapping it into this little clip. And I wear the clip either on my hat when I'm running 
or I clip it on my backpack or sling when I'm out with the kids or an adventure. It basically has been living on my camera backpack and just ready to go, which is nice. So here's the last one that I wanna show you and that's this little pendant. So this little pendant goes inside your shirt, like so. Don't use it if you have a pacemaker. And with a magnet, it snaps. Now I wouldn't run with it like this, but it is pretty stable. I have it right now through two shirts. If I can, I actually grab my sports bra because that's gonna be the, the tightest fit on me. But I just walk around. Nice, easy. It's not as obvious if I have my backpack on. It can get bumped off. So I've knocked it off as you would see in my preview, but it's nice and, and simple. And I love how quick and easy I can use it. So those are the three most common ways I've been using it. The handheld and then this little visor clip for either my hat or my backpack has been my favorite uses for this. And then also just capturing really weird shots on bikes and with my kids. It's waterproof, which also means it's sweat proof. This came in handy as I'm practicing running and carry this with me. And it's also really cool to just have something so small that you can submerge or play with your kids. Just be careful because the lens is pretty easily scratched, so you'll want a protector on there. Pricing. I'm noting pricing after the other features as you'll be looking at this camera over a GoPro due to the size. This starts at $300. Personally, I recommend the kit that starts at $360. You have all the cool accessories, but because of the size, is it worth the price when the GoPro, especially the new Hero 10, in my personal opinion, has better video and photo specs. So pricing to me is a little bit less important than the features I mentioned earlier, like the size and unique places you can stick this little camera. The battery and storage is built in. This is kind of a deal breaker at times as a content creator. In order to charge it up, you have to put it back in the base. The base will charge it up, and then you can also feed a USB-C cable into this to charge it. The downfall of this I'll talk about in the cons, but it may be a huge deal breaker for you. Video specs. If you're buying this camera, you probably don't care as much about video specs, but just so you know, the max size you're gonna get out of this is 1440, and either 30 or 50 frames per second, kinda unique, framing rate. If you're a content creator, this might matter to you. If you're going to pull this off and put it on your iPhone or Android, don't worry about it. Forget anything I just said. The quality will be just fine for you. Stabilization. Stabilization means when you're moving the camera, how good of a job does it do from making it all shaky? It does an okay job. I was actually really surprised how it does in good lighting. I'm still gonna use my GoPro Hero 10 with the horizontal leveler when I'm biking or running, but walking, especially in good lighting, this did surprisingly good in the pro setting. That was the key features and basic knowledge I think you should know about this little camera. Let's move into the pros and cons, my personal pros and cons, and then we'll try to help you figure out if this camera is worth it for you. Starting off with pros, obviously the first one is going to be size. It is so insanely small. The second one is going to be how quickly you can move it from mount to mount instead of having to unscrew something. The magnet is really, really cool. Next would be the mounts and accessories. You can put this camera in such cool places. A friend of mine has one mounted to the front of his bike bag, so we can just quickly tap it, hear the vibrate, and know that it's recording whatever he's wanting to record. 
The microphone is surprisingly good. Some of my favorite captures over the last six years since having kids have been primarily and overall, I think this is a really cool first vlogging camera, or if you're going on vacation and you want something nice and easy to hit record and capture the moment. It will do that just fine for you unless you're trying to record in the dark or have a lot of crazy stabilization needs like running. It isn't all great though. As a content creator, the footage is meh. Like it's usable, especially for those unique point of views. People will be focused on how cool the shot is and less about the quality. As a parent, if I was just trying to record something unique by clipping it on my hat or my bag and then pulling it off and sharing it to social or texting and messaging my family, the footage is great. As a content creator, the footage is meh but you have those unique point of views. So it's like this handoff. Something I could not get the hang of was that I kept videoing sideways. If you're not in the pro setting, which kind of records in a different way and lets you resize it after, I would have the camera like this and hit record and it would pick the wrong way to go horizontal or vertical. A little bit annoying, and I had a lot of lost footage because of that, because I thought it would record 16 by nine, and it ended up recording vertically nine by 16. And because it doesn't have a display, I didn't know that it was recording the wrong way. Kind of a downfall. And speaking of a con, if you wanna see what you're shooting, you have to look at it on your phone. It doesn't take long to connect, but if you're trying to frame or make sure everybody's in the shot, your best option is just to get a wide point of view and deal with it. That's probably one of my biggest cons of this as a daily vlogging camera. Once you know what you're doing, it's fine, but even just a review footage, you have to connect it and it, it's pain. Sorry. One of my last but probably most important things is battery replacement. The battery is built into this. So with time, the battery is not gonna get its full charge and full life. So my question is, is if Insta360 is going to make it available to replace the battery that's in this, I don't see a way to easily do it, but maybe they'll have a battery replacement option for it. Because if not, if you use this often for daily vlogging, you're just not gonna get that full 30 minute runtime. And, and this is just a waste going into the landfill. And that's sad. My last con is really just personal. And that's, I wish it was black. The reason for that is if I have it on my hat or my bag or something like that, the white stands out. And so, Probably in the future, I'm gonna paint this, but I would love if it was black because it would just get hidden and not stand out and not catch my kids' attention or not catch people on the streets' attention. And I just want it to be black. Maybe there's a sleeve I can make for it. But Insta360, can you come out with a black one, please? We've come to potentially the most important part of this video. And personally, when I'm watching gear reviews, I often flip to the end for the conclusion and then go back. Here's my conclusion and takeaway to help you figure out if this camera is for you. First, as a content creator, how does this fit in my life and my workflow? Does it help me? Does it bog me down? It ultimately comes down to if your shooting style, your content creating style loves and you seek out those unique point of view shots, this is a really cool camera to have in your bag. It's so small that it's not a big deal to bring. So if those shots add to your story, great. If you are willing to take that extra time to line up the shot, this is going to add a lot. Does 
and encourage you to make more? Do you love the idea of creating those unique point of views? For $300, this may be worth it, but you'll have to decide. Personally, if I had to pick between one of these, the GoTo or the Hero 10 going in my bag or purchasing it for the first time, I would start with the Hero 10 or maybe even the Insta360 One X2. If I already had those other action cams and I'm looking to add that unique point of view, yeah, maybe it's worth it. But is it worth $300 to $400 for that shot? You have to decide that for yourself. Now, how does this fit into my life as a parent? Because to me, this is actually geared more towards everyday life people, not content creators. Personally, I like the idea that I can keep it in this cute little case, about the size of my AirPods, pull it out, connect it to my hat, my bag, and record my kids without thinking about it. And forget about it, you know, just hit record because we're down by the creek or walking through something cool. It's a really unique setup for that. Is it worth three to $400 to have this in your bag at all times? You decide. I would love to hear from you in the comments. Is this action camera for you? Let me know. Also, if you're still trying to decide if it's for you and there's something specific I could test out, please let me know and I'll test it out and maybe just send you a personal video instead of creating something. I plan on doing a comparison of the Insta360 Go 2 versus the GoPro Hero 9 and 10. What would you like covered in this comparison? Alrighty, I think I, think I told you everything I wanted to tell you. Thank you for watching, and remember, stay good, stay well, and do your best to move for tomorrow and help the people around you, inspire them to move as well.